In this video, we'll be going over some conservation of energy problems, but we will specifically be practicing problems that don't include any rotational energy. So this will be problems you might see the first time you come across conservation of energy. So in this first problem, we have Bozo the Clown that can jump 0.9 meters vertically in the air. And we're asked to find the speed with which Bozo leaves the ground. So this is a problem that you could solve using kinematics. But we want to see how you would solve this problem using conservation of energy. So I'll draw my bows of the clown just as a person jumping 0.9 meters in the air. And one thing that we know from kinematics at the very top, the velocity is going to be zero. So conservation of energy says that the total energy that we start with must equal the total energy that we end with. So initial total energy equals final total energy. And our energy could be in the form of kinetic energy or potential energy. Okay, so now if I fill these in, our formula for kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So Initial kinetic energy will depend on the initial velocity. And in this case, the only type of potential energy we might have is gravitational potential energy. And that's given by the mass times gravitational acceleration times our height. So in this case, our initial height. So I guess I'll say that we'll let y equal zero be the ground. Then I'll do the same thing for the final quantities. So everything on the right should be initial, everything on the, um, or final, everything on the left should be initial. And so if we just look at our problem, when Bozo jumps initially, he's jumping from the ground. So he's at y equals zero. His height is just zero. So our initial gravitational potential energy will be zero. And then we just said that at the top, when he gets to the top of his jump, he's not moving. So his final velocity is going to be zero, meaning he has no kinetic energy. And so this simplifies our expression a good bit. We have one half mv initial squared equals mgh, so final height. We have an m on both sides. So our mass is going to just go away. We can divide through. And if we solve for our initial velocity, we're just going to multiply by 2 on both sides, and then we need to take a square root. So if we do this, we'll take the square root of 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared, and then times the height of 0.9 meters. And if you plug this in, you get 4.2 meters per second. Now really quickly, I would like to show that we get the same thing from kinematics. So we know our velocity in the y direction at the top is zero. Our delta y, or displacement in the y direction, is 0 0.9 meters. And so if we go to our equations, we don't know anything about time. So we could go to our kinematic equations and find the one that doesn't have time in it. And vy is going to be zero. So if we were to solve for v not y using our kinematic equations, we would move this term over and make it positive and then take the square root. And so we would get square root of 2g delta y. And so you can see that we get the exact same expression as kinematics. It's just um, with conservation of energy, we call delta y our height. Okay, so we get the same result kinematics and the, really the reason why we want to use conservation of energy is because it does give the same answer it's just much easier in many cases to use conservation of energy rather than kinematics or Newton's laws. So in the next problem a 1.5 kilogram book is dropped from a height of 2.2 meters onto a spring. If the spring compresses 4.5 centimeters find the spring constant of the spring. Okay so we have a book call this at time t1 
And we're going to drop this book onto a spring that's on the ground. Okay, and then, so this is where the book started. And at some later time, the book's going to fall onto the spring, and it's going to be compressed. And the height that it was dropped is 2.2 meters. Okay, so it helps to draw a good picture. And since this is the height at the bottom, I'm going to call this my y equals zero. Okay, that way we don't want to worry about the height of the book relative to the ground. We're just interested in the height that it falls. And we want to use conservation of energy. So the total energy it starts with is going to equal the total energy at the end, so initial kinetic plus initial potential is equal to final kinetic plus final potential energy. Okay, now in this problem, we have two types of potential energy. We have potential energy from gravity because it's changing heights, but also there's a spring, so there's some elastic potential energy in the spring. So when we write out our types of energies, for potential, we're going to have two potential energies. We're going to have a gravitational potential energy and a spring potential energy given by one-half kx squared. So this is uh, going to be the initial displacement of the spring. And then we'll have the same thing for the final energy quantities. So mgh final plus one-half kx final where xf is the uh, final displacement of the spring, and it's going to be squared. So, first thing we want to do is figure out what's zero. So, in the very beginning, we're going to drop this book, and since we're dropping it and we're not throwing it up or throwing it down, it's going to be dropped from rest, so our initial velocity will be zero. And then it is starting from some height, so we do have some initial potential energy. But initially, the spring is not displaced. It's not compressed or stretched. It's just um, resting. And the book's not touching the spring. So this is going to be zero. If we look at the picture at time two, after the book has fallen, um, once the book falls and compresses the spring, the spring is going to slow down the book, and eventually it's going to stop. And so the final velocity is not zero. The moment the book hits the spring, it has a non-zero final velocity. Um, but then once the spring compresses, it's going to slow down and stop when it's at rest. Okay, And then we said that we're going to call this final height the book stops at y equals zero. And so its final height will be zero. And then the spring does have some displacement as it's compressed at the end. So the only terms that really survive is the potential energy from gravity at the beginning um, and the potential energy from the spring at the end. So our expression simplifies a great deal. And we have initial gravitational potential energy equals the final elastic potential energy of the spring. And so now if we solve for our spring constant, we need to multiply by 2 to get this over, so 2 mg h initial, and then we need to divide by our x squared, or our final displacement squared. So maybe I'll put a little subscript here. And if we plug all of this in, we get 2 times the mass of the book, 1.5 kilograms, times 9.8 meters per second squared, times our initial height of 2.2 meters, all over our spring displacement squared, so that's going to be 0 0.045 meters, converting from centimeters. We'll square that, and we plug that in, we get 31,940 newtons per meter, or 31.94 kilonewtons per meter. So that just means that this is a pretty tough spring. Okay, so it's pretty stiff. In this next problem, you skate down a 3 meter uh, radius half pipe with an initial speed of 4 meters per second 
and we want to find the total height you reach after you leave the other side of the half pipe. So if I just draw a half pipe, so if you're a skateboarder, you might be able to draw this better than me. The radius is three meters. I'm just going to draw this the best I can. You're going to be going down initially at three meters per second. You're going to go through and you're going to end at some final height. So your V initial is four meters per second. Okay. And we want to use conservation of energy. So that says our final total energy is equal to our initial total energy or final kinetic plus final potential is equal to initial kinetic plus initial potential. So in this case, there's no springs or any elastic potential energies. So we're just going to have potential energy of gravity. So kinetic energy is one half mv squared plus gravitational potential energy. And then the same for the initial quantities. Okay, so we're going to start off the ground. So you can put this as y equals zero. Um, so our initial height will be just the radius of the half pipe. So at all distances from the center, it's three meters. So we are three meters off the ground initially. And our initial velocity is going to be four meters per second. Okay. And then we know that when we get to the maximum height on the other side, we're going to stop. So we're not going to be moving at the top. So our final kinetic energy is going to be zero, but all of the other terms are going to exist. So we have some final potential energy, some initial potential energy. And since we're moving in the beginning of the problem, we have some initial kinetic energy as well. So we want to find the final height. So first, let me, let me rewrite this equation. So first off, we notice that we have mass in every, um, in every term, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. And then once we have that, we're almost there. We just have g times our final height. And so we really just need to divide through by g. And so we get our final height is, I'm going to put this underneath like this. So that's the first term. And then the second term, the g is just going to cancel. So we just have our initial height. Okay, and when we plug this in, we have initial speed of four meters per second. That gets squared over two times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, plus the initial height that we started with of three meters. And if we plug that in, we get 3.8 meters. Okay, so that is roughly 0 0.8 meters above the top of the half pipe. It's the top of, or 3.8 meters from the ground. So in this last problem, we have a skier that slides down a steep frictionless slope, which makes an angle of 70 degrees with the horizontal. The length of the slope is 12 meters. If the skier starts from rest and has a mass of 55 kilograms, find their final velocity at the bottom of the slope. So, they're going down a pretty steep slope. And then it's going to round out at the ground. This may be exaggerated a bit. So this is the ground, and this angle that the slope makes is going to be 70 degrees. And it gave us the length of this slope. It's 12 meters. Okay. And we want to use conservation of energy since it's changing its height and changing its velocity. So conservation of energy is final energy equals initial energy. So that's final kinetic plus final potential equals initial, uh, initial kinetic plus initial potential energy. 
Okay, so I'm just going to fill these out. One half mbf squared plus gravitational potential energy mgh final is one half mv initial squared plus mg h initial okay so at the top where we start we are starting from rest so that tells us that our initial velocity is zero initial kinetic energy is also zero and when we get to the bottom we'll call this y equals zero Height will be zero, so the gravitational potential energy at the end will be gone. I'm going to rewrite our equation. MVF squared plus should be equals MGH initial. Now, this is the initial height. But we just know the length of the slope. We don't exactly know how high this is yet. So to find our height, we need to make a right triangle. So this is our 70 degree angle. And this is the uh, distance or the length of the slope. We'll call it D. It's 12 meters. But what we want is the height. And so since the height in this case is the opposite side of our right triangle, then our height will be given by the hypotenuse or D times the sine of this angle. So it's going to be 12 meters times sine of 70. And I'm going to just plug that all in at the end. So if we go back to our equation. We have mass in both terms. And I'm going to solve for the final velocity. So I'm going to multiply by 2. This is going to be 2gh, but instead of h, I'm going to write our height as d sine theta, and then we need to take a square root. So this is, looks like I write it here, mg and then h is d sine theta, and our mass canceled. Okay, so now if we plug all of that in, 2 times 9.8 meters per second squared, distance of 12 meters, and to get the height, we need to do sine of 70 degrees. When we plug that in, we get a final velocity of 14.9 meters per second. So hopefully that helped, and then later on we'll have some more problems using conservation of energy when we consider rotational energy along with translational, uh, translational kinetic energy.